turn to the fourth case on this morning's docket. CCR number 1318 in Ray April C. Shepard. May it please the court, I am Todd Thompson, good morning. I am here today appearing as disciplinary counsel for the Board of Examiners of Court Reporters. Mr. Chief Justice, I would like to reserve three minutes for rebuttal. Three minutes is granted. This case involves a court reporter, the respondent, who posted on social media certain comments about a highly publicized murder trial here in Shawnee County. The respondent had been the court reporter for that case and commented on the veracity of the defendant, the veracity of the prosecutor, and her relationship with the judge and familiarity with the judge. The case was on appeal at that time, and so a disciplinary action was initiated against the respondent. She admitted that her behavior violated Rule 9F9, which states that a court reporter shall, quote, maintain impartiality toward each participant in all aspects of reported proceedings or other court-related matters. The matter was presented on stipulated facts to the Board of Examiners of Court Reporters, and the board recommended to this court that the respondent be publicly censured. The issue presented to the board, since the violation was admitted and since the facts were stipulated to, was strictly the question of whether there would be a public or a private censure involved here. To begin with, I'd like to refer this court to its own opinion in the matter of Henderson in Volume 306 of the Kansas Reports, where this court quoted the Johnstone case of the Alaska Supreme Court and said that the purpose of discipline is the protection of the public. One component of that protection is keeping the public informed of transgressions and the consequences. That way, the public knows that its government is actively investigating allegations of misconduct and that appropriate action is being taken when the allegations are proved, as they were here. Discipline thus protects the public by fostering public confidence in the integrity and self-policing of the judicial system. I would like to start with that underlying premise and then respond to a few things in the respondent's brief. The respondent contends that while she may have violated the, quote, spirit of the rule, there was no hostility toward the defendant in the murder case. We would argue that there is not just a spiritual violation, but a very direct violation in that the court reporter lacked impartiality very clearly. The comments made were very negative, accusing her of committing a murder. The comments were, Dana Chandler is not innocent. No one else would have done this murder but Dana Chandler. The respondent also contends on page four of the brief that the case was remanded to be retried for reasons that were unrelated to the Facebook posts, and that is simply not true. One of the Facebook posts was, I don't believe Jackie Spradling lied. This court found quite to the contrary. One of the headings of its opinion in that murder case in which it reversed the conviction 
was that there was a false claim by the prosecution that there had been a court order issued which in fact was not true and this court stated quote none of this is true these statements are not true so not only did the court reporter comment on the veracity of the prosecutor in that case she was incorrect in what she stated in this public forum the respondent suggests that she did not berate any of the other participants in the conversation on social media but i would quote one of those comments quote oh stop dana chandler is not innocent i believe that is berating the people who were commenting on page five of respondents brief they say there is little <coughs> likelihood of any substantial pre prejudice to the defendant um, even if there had been no facebook posts but i think respondent misses the point here it is the profession and the justice system that is damaged or prejudiced by these comments by a court reporter on an active case these were not impartial comments and they were especially false comments and to then say i was there i reported the whole case and i know the judge lends a credibility to her comments that is in inappropriate on page five of respondents brief she criticizes my reference to the Clark report, which I would say was the beginning of moving disciplinary actions out of dark rooms and closed doors and into the public. The Clark report said that public censure is a vital tool in disciplinary enforcement. It educates others and prevents future misconduct. Since we're, we're you're moving to the discipline itself as opposed to the violations are we i'm not even sure how to ask this question are, are are we hindered at all by the rules or lack of rules governing the procedure that we're in the middle of i think the rules could be enhanced yes in other words i, I don't where do we look to even know what our options are well, I think, for example, looking to the purpose of discipline, as you yourselves uh, stated it in the Henderson case and in other cases, um, the issue is public versus private here. Well, but is that true? I mean, why isn't the uh, license itself at issue, potentially? Uh, I think this court can... Uh, go beyond what is recommended and that's my question is how, how do we in the absence of m more specific rules what guides us or what should guide us in your view the degree of offense as you uh, view it the uh, cooperation or uh, demeanor of the respondent and respondent sent a letter in admitting the violation and apologizing for the violation. So I think those weigh in her favor if the court were considering suspending her license, for example. Um, it sounds like to me your answer is that this court has inherent authority to impose whatever discipline up to and including suspending or eliminating the license. And I guess my question is, is that, is that right? Or, or do we have to pin it to, to some kind of rule? Well, I think under the rule itself, you have the authority to go beyond what the uh, board recommends. Okay. You can impose a period of probation with special conditions. You can actually uh, suspend the certificate. Correct. So what you're saying is the recommendation, what I understand Justice Big will say, how did you come up with the recommendation that you came up with? Uh, the board came up with the recommendation. I'm the board, excuse me, Mr. Thompson. Well, and, and I don't participate in their discussions or 
uh, deliberations, but that was the recommendation they came up with. They followed your advice on that, though, didn't they, Council? You recommended some sort of public sanction? <coughs> Not That's the exactly. way I read there. Oh, okay, you did. Not okay. exactly. I, I what they did, that. because all of the facts were stipulated to and the violation was admitted, mm -hmm. they wanted, and there was a dispute as to whether any sort of discipline would be public or private between mm -hmm. the parties. Mm -hmm. They said, okay, we'll have a hearing just on this issue of public versus private. So you come in and argue why you think it would be public. The respondent should come in and argue why they think it should be private. Okay. So that was the only issue we actually presented during the hearing to the board. Right, but it was your recommendation that it be public. Yes, it was. And so what I said, what I meant to ask, if this wasn't clear, was that the board ultimately followed that advice or adopted that position in making its recommendation to this court. They did adopt the. Uh, position of the prosecutor public. that it be a public as opposed to private. Okay, thanks. And you're sticking with that recommendation to us today? I am. Okay. Mr. Toms, I have somewhat of an unrelated question in the sense that we do have an appeal here and it was an active case. Just what would your opinion be is if this was not on appeal, this was a dead case? Was the idea of the uh, court reporter going to social media and making these comments after the fact? No. I, I don't think she should have made the comments at all. Uh, is, there a, is it a violation? Is it a, is it a sanctionable uh, I, I ethical believe, violation? I believe she would be showing, even if the case was done, I believe she would be showing impartiality to certain participants in the action. Partiality. You partiality. partiality. You said impartiality. She would be showing Im she would be showing partiality. Yeah. She would be failing to be impartial. It's almost a double negative. So yes, I think it would be inappropriate even if the case was over. The Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court, a few weeks ago talked about a case out of this court, and it was a, a gentleman. They said, "Well, the facts here, even if we rule in your favor, he's going to be found guilty." Did they violate that rule then, or? I mean, they made a, a comment on someone's guilt. How is how is that different from what if it's a if it's a case that that you end up having? That, in other words, a, a court and officers of the court are never allowed to make comments on cases. Period. I don't know that they were showing partiality in their comment because I don't know the case you're referring okay. to. But I don't think they should be commenting on someone's veracity, for example, or defending someone's veracity when they've been sitting on that particular trial. Or someone's guilt. Well, they may have a, a ruling that determines the guilt, right. yes. <coughs> My, my time is about up. Are there any other questions? I see none. I, I would like to respond to one other thing. It was suggested that the standard of conduct is ill-defined. And I would suggest that maintaining impartiality toward each participant is fairly clearly defined. And here, it was very clearly violated. So I will reserve my three minutes for rebuttal. Thank you, Council. Good morning. Uh, my name is James Chappas. I represent uh, <clears throat> court, uh, the uh, court reporter in this, this particular matter, April Shepard, and I know my time is limited. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about uh, on the outset was the reference to uh, Miss Shepard's communications as being postings. The, the comments that, are, that she was disciplined regarding were, they were excerpts of conversations that she had on Facebook. And, and it, it, it wasn't an issue as to whether she just threw these things up and said, this is, you know, this is my opinion. These were con conversations, and if you look at the ones, uh, I think they're attached on my brief, they, they were with uh, individuals who are obvious supporters of Dana Chandler. 
Now, yes. now Council, so I'm, I'm just going to back you up right there for sure. A I'm not much of a Facebook expert, so what difference does it make that something's labeled a posting or a conversation? I don't, I don't understand the difference. Well, can I you explain I that to me? I, I think it does in this particular instance because, in my opinion, and I, and I was clear in my brief, I think, I think Miss Chandler, uh, uh, the supporters of Miss Chandler, purposefully baited uh, Miss Shepard to engage in conversations. Uh, uh, about this particular trial to use in some some further, uh, but your client knew they were public, right? There's no allegation that she didn't know it was public. No, no, Judge. But it's real important to sort of keep in mind in context. Number one, in terms of when this activity took place, and then secondly, when you're online talking and having communications with somebody, I don't think it's. It's on the forefront of somebody's brain that hey, this is going out to the universe. I I I, I really don't. Uh, but that that would be should, my should a should an office or should a person who's an employee of the court <clears throat> in an active case even be talking about it? Period. Never mind the tenor of the comments. A agreed. Answer is no. Okay. Answer so is no. So it seems like there are several levels here. Uh, I, I don't think minimization of the behavior. Is a winning argument for you here. Well, I'm 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 not trying to minimize the the behavior. I think I'm trying to place it in an appropriate perspective. Mm -hmm. In in this in this particular case, these conversations took place while this case was on appeal. Number one, and it was still an active case. Agreed. Uh, 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 agreed. Agreed. But and, and an employee of the court shouldn't even be discussing the case with anyone outside the court system in that circumstance, should they? Uh, agreed. Okay. That's I, I agree. So I, that's I, that's the first level that should have been a red flag. Oh, and the I, second I level, of course, is expressing opinions about the merits right. of the case, right? And and that was my assessment of the case when I took this. The the things that jumped out and bothered me. Number one was that these comments were made, and in 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 conjunction with these comments were, well, I'm the court reporter. I was there. Uh, Judge Parrish is a nice lady, and all of those things, and I can fully see how the public can can say, well, hey, you know, um, maybe there's something here to this opinion, but also in the context, this behavior occurred after a jury of 12 people found this individual guilty. Uh, my assessment of the of of the uh, of the uh, in the feel that I got from those from that conversation was is, is that April primarily was saying, look, I think the jury was right. And I think that this... Well, a judge isn't allowed to make that comment. He's, a judge isn't allowed to comment or commend a jury for their decision or criticize a jury agreed. for their decision. She is an officer of the court. I agree. So I, I, I don't understand how that... Well, I, and again, I agree that it's improper. But I, but I disagree as to the severity that both the board found as uh, constituting that conduct, and I, I disagree with the severity in terms of the representations made by the attorney for the board. Uh, I mean, yes, those, those comments shouldn't have been made. I, I, I agree with that. But I think given, Mich and I argued this, um, I argued these grounds before the, before the board, I think given the totality of the circumstances concerning this particular case, that a public censure uh, uh, discipline was, it was excessive. Now, the, the attorney for the board quotes in his brief uh, some 50-year-old treatise that says, hey, well, you know, we have a right to squash people. Uh, for for disciplinary infractions, you know, primarily because we want to not primarily, but in substantial part because we want to inform the public. Well, I think that that is absolutely ridiculous. In the context of these disciplinary cases, and I would sort of make reference to the uh, by analogy to attorney discipline. Number one, there's got to be a standard. Why why is she supposed to be publicly censured? Why? How did they how did they come for that? In my brief, I, I cited ABA standard 3.2, argued that in this particular case that the court should utilize this in terms of imposing discipline because there's nothing there for court reporters. And, and that particular standard, it, it, it talks about the individual's employment record, prior, prior discipline, and all of those grounds. 
And in this particular case, uh, the board just said, well, we want to publicly send you her, and boom, and, and that's it. In light of your comment that there's, the authorities are thin, so I'll just put it that oh, way. Oh, almost non-existent, I But agree. in light of that, what is your view of this court's options in resolving this matter? I, I, I believe that the court would have the in inherent authority to do whatever it would want to do concerning your license. So you're not here arguing for a, for a limited range of options in terms of what this court's power is? No, no, no. Although it would have been, it probably certainly would have been helpful in terms of notice to everybody involved, including Ms. Shepard and all the other court reporters. Well, that that's part of what I was thinking of right. earlier, but... It sounded to me like you just conceded that Correct. you're not making that argument. No, no. What my, my argument is, 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 is given the totality of the circumstances in this particular case, a private censure is the appropriate discipline. That, that, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm arguing in this, in this case. But what, some of the other things that the uh, attorney for the board brought up was this, you know, was this issue about uh, the accusation that April made false statements in, in these uh, conversations, that's ab absolutely incorrect and non-existent. She made comments concerning the veracity of Jackie Spradling, and, and that was her belief. That was her belief based upon her experience and, and also her experience at the trial. Just because the court, a year or so later, goes ahead and says, well, Ms. Spradling, you acted inappropriately. We're going we're gonna to reverse this. That doesn't mean that April lied, and that also doesn't. It also doesn't mean that April's comments on Facebook somehow resulted in that reversal and and the this court's mandate that she be retried. That's counsel. a ludicrous argument. I, it's false. Counsel, what I'm getting from opposing counsel's argument is that when you are partial or giving the appearance of partiality, mm -hmm. and you are part of the court system that that strikes at the very heart of what all people in the court system are trying to show the public, that we are impartial, we do not insert information, we don't express personal opinions. And one of the concerns someone in the public might have, I don't know that this has come up in this case, but if a court reporter is speaking out openly like this on these issues, can we trust the transcript that the reporter has prepared? because she knows the judge so well, because she is commenting on what the prosecutor has said, and now that this court has said the prosecutor, you were wrong, and the reporter an, a year earlier, as you said, disagreed, we now have a court reporter publicly saying, Supreme Court, you were wrong? Well, I... Can, can, can you just address that general ab issue? Absolutely. I, I agree that there... What my, what my position would be is there would be a presumption that she did the fair and not the fair, the, the actual uh, correct transcription of the proceeding because she's, I believe she's sworn on oath or, or she's required to do that. I agree that there could be a, an inference of impropriety, a, 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 a tainting of that the, the proceeding wasn't pristine. I agree with that. I agree with that completely. And that's why in, in, in my brief, I argued, I, I, I'm not denying that there has not been a violation of the spirit of that particular rule. I, I'm not denying that. But I don't believe that Ms. Shepard's statements taken, uh, just reading through them, indicates partiality. I, I don't believe that, and the reason why I don't believe that is 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 that all that those statements occurred after a jury came back with a, 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 a conviction of second degree, not second degree, a double homicide conviction in the Chandler case. I think the rule uh, needs to be more definitive and and identify what impartiality is. I mean, what what partiality is. And the rule doesn't say that. The rule just says, thou shall not be a partial. And um, I, I believe that, quite frankly, if, if the rule had a better definition, number one, uh, I, I, I think that this would be a lot more clearer. But secondly, I, I, my gut is, is that this action would 
could probably be best addressed under some type of other general misconduct rule, uh, discipline-wise, as opposed to the allegation of uh, partiality. I just don't see that that exists, but I can see that there an inference can be made. Counsel, I, I just don't understand your comment at the beginning of that several sentence <coughs> statement because she engaged in a back and forth arguing about and she, and she took sides in in a in an open debate of issues that were on appeal pending in front of this court. Correct. She took sides. That's showing impartiality. That's showing partiality. I, she said, you know, I believe in Jackie Spradling. You know, that, that's it, which implicit in that statement is the claim of prosecutorial misconduct is wrong. I don't believe in the in the context, Judge, of, of those Facebook conversations. Uh, uh, Jackie, uh, I, 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 I don't think that those were straight on addressed. I mean, in, in a way, I guess they were, but uh, I mean... She mentions her by name. She does. I, she says, uh, I will not say I agreed with everything Jackie Spradling said or did, but it didn't change anything. Meaning, even if she made a mistake, it was harmless. Well, I, I think you can find the answer to that question, Judge, in, in the other Facebook I, conversation. That wasn't even a question. I was just reading from it. I don't know how you can say that that is not taking a position on an issue that was pending before this court. I'm not denying it. It's not taking a position. What I'm, what I am taking issue is, is making the next step to say that that shows that she's impartial. I mean, and that shows that she's partial. If, if they're talking about beliefs, they're talking about the merits of these issues back and forth in this conversation. I don't, I don't see how that Which, shows a conversation that we've established. She had no business taking part in in the first. Agreed. Time. Thank agreed. You. Agreed. Can you can you address? I I I think the chief touched on it, but how how is how is the public supposed to interpret Ms. Shepard's comment as something other than speaking on behalf of the court? How how, how does it how is it just personalized to Ms. Shepard in her important role as court reporter? It does. It does, doesn't it? I agree. And it reflects on the entire proceeding, uh, maybe especially on Judge Parrish and her partiality. Could it be extended to that? But uh, I don't know that. I, I mean, I don't know that. It, my speculation. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, that's that's all right. But that's that's my concern. And here, here is a person that sat through every proceeding in that trial, speaking out in 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 uh, in partial ways. And I don't know how that doesn't reflect on everyone that's involved in the proceeding. I believe that it, it does. I, and, 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 I, and I think that's correct. But again, in terms of the quantum that, of discipline that's requested to be administered in this particular case, absent a clear definition in a clear prohibitory rule and adequate notice to go out to these court reporters, uh, I, I just think the public censure is excessive. That, that brings now, up a, I'm sorry, go ahead and finish your thought. But I mean, if it was lawyers, I mean, I, I agree that there's some, there's some point in this discussion where, where the question needs to be asked or the statement needs to be made as well, hey, you're a court reporter or hey, you're a lawyer, even though it's not here in writing, uh, duh, you shouldn't, shouldn't have said this. Yeah, you're making a procedural fairness argument, and I get that. But you also also previously stated that this court has the inherent power to do whatever it needs to do Agreed. to enforce the rules. Agreed. And and what so, my and what my I'm argument trouble of reconciling. Yeah, I, I thought statements. you gave up the the procedural side of this in our earlier exchange. That's that's what I'm referring. No, but to. well, what I'm what I thought I was saying is is acknowledging that the court can can basically make whatever rule that it wants concerning her 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 license. But I, but I think what I was arguing for is is for the specific form of discipline that that should that should be administered as to what I believe is fair under the totality of the, uh, of the under the totality of the circumstances, and I don't see why. I mean, I would think that there needs to be some type of standard. As well, let me ask it this way. If this were the district court judge who presided over the trial, who made all these, who, everything else is the same. Yes. And we're talking about the district yes. court judge. 
I don't know that we would be debating between public and private censure. No, I don't we, think so. We'd be looking at something quite a bit more severe. Absolutely, but that's... And a, so the only thing that, in my mind, it seems like the only thing that distinguishes that hypothetical case from the one in front of us is the level of notice and the level of rulemaking that exists as it relates to district judges as opposed to court reporters. Is no, there something I, else that I'm missing? I, I, no, I think there is. I think it's a totally different situation if you're talking about the course and, course and conduct of a, of a district court judge who, who, who is a lawyer as, as opposed to a court reporter. I'm not saying it's apples and oranges, but I, I think that, that, that there's a certain amount of knowledge that is, I'm sure, going to be imputed to a judge that maybe should have been down there in black and white that's going to be a quantum greater than of a court reporter. A 20-year uh, court reporter. A 20-year court reporter, that's Shouldn't correct. Shouldn't know not to do this. Should should but we, we've not had internet we've not had social media very long i don't understand how that makes any difference it it, it does make difference in, in my opinion be, because in, other than in your opinion of what's the argument well if, if if social media was non-existent then we probably would have had a, just a actual discussion between april shepherd and would that have been any more proper should she be talking about this case while it's pending on appeal? She she should not be, but that would have been more problematic, and it is more problematic. I I believe is because of the, the existence of social media. Are you suggesting that she needs to take some type of ethical classes then uh, concerning her job, her responsibilities as an officer of the court? Well, if if, if that is a, uh, I, I think she realizes now that that type of disclosure. And, and behavior is improper. I mean, she submitted a letter of apology to the board. She also agreed uh, to a uh, suggested order of cease and desist from commenting. That that should have been in the. It should, was. Yeah. It should should have should have been in the court. In the she court agreed front. to cease and desist something she shouldn't have done in the first place. Agreed. Um, I, and what I hear your argument is is that she really didn't understand the ramifications or the, the problems with her comments. And that's why I asked the question about the ethics uh, classes. Is, is this well, something that is needed? Uh, I, well, I agree. I think, I think what's needed is I think the, the board needs to, uh, needs to compose uh, comprehensive uh, you know, rules that are as comprehensive as possible and in, in, uh, get the word out to court reporters by way of continuing legal education. So I understand you to be safe. The question is, why should we treat Ms. Shepard differently than we would treat a district judge in this circumstance? I understand well, you to be saying one of the reasons is that there is insufficient uh, rulemaking and insufficient notice out there. And, and is there any other reason to treat them differently? Yes, the, the, the educational level involved. The, the nature of the, the job duties, the response, the relative responsibilities of the party. Uh, I, I think it's, I think it's, it's different. Council, we've taken a lot of your time with our questions. Would you like thirty seconds to sum up? Just briefly, I, I, I would like the court to take a look at the uh, ABA standard three point two. I would like the court to uh, address and consider the fact that. Ms. Shepard, once she realized what she had done was improper, and she took all affirmative steps uh, to, to basically cure that. She apologized. She uh, agreed to a cease and desist order. She agreed to, she agreed to stipulated facts. She has no prior uh, record of, of discipline whatsoever. And also because of the specific uh, nature of this case, uh, being associated with a Chandler matter, she's already received some fairly nasty press, uh, and and I, I would submit that under the totality of the facts, that a public censure is 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 the most appropriate, and would request that the court consider that and 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 order that. In I think you uh, said private. public private. censure. I mean private, private censure. I'm sorry, private censure. That's All correct. Right. All right. Thank you, counsel. Thank you. I want to respond first to the notion that discipline squashes people. I think that's highly inappropriate comment, uh, especially to this court, which disciplines people all the time with no intent of squashing them. 
The respondent's brief on page six says it's not the respondent's job to enforce ethical violations that occur in her profession. Uh, I, I just think they completely missed the point, and frankly, I've been convinced in the last 15 minutes that more than just a public censure is appropriate. I think there needs to be some educational uh, discipline applied in this particular Along those case. lines, how would you answer my earlier question, why should we treat this matter differently than we would treat it, it had it been a district court judge? I, I don't know that you would treat it differently. I don't. I think a judge would be reprimanded for opining on a case on appeal, too. Should a court reporter be held to a lower standard than a district court judge, in your view? Not on the issue of impartiality, no. That's, that's too simple and too easy to discern. And, and let, me, let me note that, that they say on page 6 that she was somehow tricked into these conversations so that they could seek vengeance against her for her opinions. Well, they don't know her opinions if she doesn't get on Facebook and post them. So she couldn't have been tricked into getting onto Facebook about her opinions. And that's really kind of my closing comment is this issue is all about public versus private. The respondent failed to keep things private. She went on Facebook, she posted public comments, and one of those comments that she posted was, I don't believe Jackie Spradling lied. That's pretty specific. Um, and that was also not an accurate statement. So we have someone who went public, expressed opinions on things she admits she shouldn't have been doing, but now wants everything to be kept private and any discipline to be private, I would ask the court to consider some of the other items in subparagraph E for discipline that may be appropriate in light of what we just heard, because I don't think they get it. Now, there may be a serious disconnect between the respondent and her counsel based upon my conversations with both of them. Frankly, I think respondent gets it a lot more than her counsel does, but something needs to be done to make them aware of the impropriety of these impartial comments. Counsel, what does the, the board do about, um, I'm going to call them ethics of court reporters? What Are there educational opportunities that are certified or made available or you know, just or part of maintaining a professional license? I don't know the answer to that. And, and I don't know the answer to whether there's, are, are you talking about ongoing, continuing educational yeah. requirements? I don't know Particularly the answer. Particularly in the area of ethics. And, and I don't know the answer. Do we have any further questions? I believe that concluded your presentation. Mr. Chief Justice, as one of your classmates of the class of 1982, uh, again, like everyone else today, I want to say thank you for letting me be on this final docket, and I wish you the best in your retirement. Thank you, Counsel. Thank both of you for your arguments this morning. The court will take this matter under advisement.